with uh, Michael at the moment, just getting the harnesses for the horses. Can you take us through what you're doing, Michael? Well, this is this is uh, what we call Western Bridging Harness. Um, it goes on and it's made in lots of pieces, but it goes on in one piece. Uh, this is what we call the hames down here, uh, the back band, and you'll see how it went. We'll take it out and sit it on the horse and it becomes a lot more clear now. Okay. At All the right. moment it just looks like a big jumble of leather. Okay, is this one you made yourself? This you're... one we made ourselves. Yep. Did you? Yep. Okay. No All right. What sort of time would be involved in putting something like that to making something like this? Is... Oh, it takes, it'll probably take me a, a week to, to, to build a set of harness. Beautiful. So a week full time. That's a yeah. gorgeous thing. Oh, to make the, the harness for two horses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the collar, of course. See how it goes on once we get it up on board, you know. It's pretty heavy too, Kevin. Oh wow, what sort of weight's in there? Oh heavy for me. I said I'm always too heavy for light work and too heavy, too light for heavy work, so <laughs> it's, 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 it almost you know it's half as much as a saddle I suppose, but it's pretty awkward you know getting up on these big horses. I mean these horses are 17 hands tall and you can see I'm sitting down in a bit of a gully here. Uh, and what what sort of breed of horse are these Michael? Uh, these are, these are Percherons. That's a French draft breed. They're, they're pretty well suited, well suited to what we do here. They've got good feet. Uh, they've got really, really good natures. Beautiful horses. Do you breed them yourself here? No, I don't breed. Uh, no. these, I just bought these off a, off a fellow in Melbourne, actually, that's that, uh, got some really good coach horses down there. Right. So what's, what are we looking for in a really good, comfortable harness for the horse? What are the ingredients? Well, first thing you want a collar that fits good. That's the, you know, there's your collar up there, of course. The collar has to fit nice. You can't be, you don't want it too big or too small. Uh, the old rule of thumb is, you know, that uh, horses hurt more with collars that are too big than too small. This is, this is a, what we call a bridging harness. And you'll see in a minute when I hit you, when I put it all together, how it all works and it all ties everything together. So, so is, is it a tried and true way, uh, way of actually making them or are you be, is there new innovations coming in when you're actually no, making a new harness no, these days? All, no, it's all been tried and proven long, 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 even before my grandfather was born. <laughs> so if it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. Exactly. And it's not much of a, it's quite simple. So now we go to our bridles. Oh, yeah. You got the grass, grass knobs, and then they come into timber, then they come into the... Yeah, they're pretty nice, those wooden hands. Yeah, yeah, and they've got a wallaby it's not open on, on the... I've only ever seen them with a line on them, you know, with, yeah. but on the steel part. But what? got a little wallaby on it. So this here you'll see with most harness horses, you'll run them in winkers or blinds so they can't see what's going on behind you. Oh, yeah. How long does it take to train one of the horses into the harnesses, Michael? If the horses are bred for, if the horses are bred for it, it doesn't take that long. These horses have probably had about six months of work when I got them. They've done city work in Melbourne, and they'd had, uh, they'd seen the back end of a lot of trams. These fellas before I got them, they'd never seen any kangaroos in the bush. They in effect push, they push into the collar, and the, the collar then transfer, then it's transferred from a push into a pull, which it pulls from the. You get the collar, then your hames back to your traces so the horses walk you know push into the collar and that's why the collars need to fit good and when you fit the collars you like the collars this one maybe just a hair big foot for a wood road but uh if you want it just so you can just get your hand you don't want it too big okay so just enough for a bit of comfort there a bit of movement yeah yeah, yeah. Now, now, if they're too tight you'll know when they're too tight because it'll start choking the horse but if it's too big they'll start to get a little bit sore after they've done a lot of hard work but these these fellows have never ever got sore or shirked their work. Well, they certainly look pretty contented. Do they have names, the horses? That's, uh, wood, that's Woodrow and Gar. And how about the wagon itself, Michael? What's the story behind this? That's a wagon I built here in the in the shop <laughs> in, the, in the shed. You uh, built this yourself? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Just, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> oh, I've got wagons and harness and drive horses. This isn't my spare time. This is your passion. Yeah. This is your okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that uh, you know, making a wagon is not rocket science. Uh, and you, you know, you, there's not too many wagon factories or wagon makers left around, so it was much easier just to 
build the wagon as we wanted it. And it worked pretty well. You'll see later when we when we get going in the wagon, it works pretty good. Yeah, had, and how long did it take to actually build the wagon? Uh, it was being a work in progress for for probably a month or so. You yeah. know, you'd make something, you'd change something, or modify the suspension a, a few times. Yes. Or even put some modern uh, airbags under the back of it. Because the customers, uh, the, the, the passengers, comforters, you know, number one priority around here. Of course. <laughs> yeah. okay, and what's what's this piece that's being put on now called? Well, that, that's what we call a neck yoke. Uh, this here is... Uh, the magic tape, you know, the grey tape, if you want to get a close-up of that. That'll mend okay. between duct tape and number eight wire, it will mend it will, it will mend everything except a broken heart. Okay, and is this traditional um, duct tape we've got here, the grey tape, really is it? Yeah, that yeah. was invented, an old chuck wagon cook invented that back in 1866. <laughs> that used to be in the stew of a night time, didn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, what they did, they, uh, they had to breed special ducks for it, though. <laughs> Very nice, because... Uh, in case a horse gets into trouble with the harness, then you can cut them loose. And you know what they say, kid? Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Well, that's what they say about parachutes, anyway. Yeah. For, the, for the neck yoke. Then I'll just hook the chains up now, the, 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 the trace chains. Uh, Woodrow comes over, he knows what he's doing. Think he's done this before. Yep, probably has. <laughs> Can we sit at the front? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and look what right. when I go like this, as soon as this one gets clipped in, guess what? We're ready to go.